The Glass House is rated M for a mature audience. It contains coarse language, sex references, adult themes and material that may offend some viewers. Ahead in the Glass House, a free plug. John, our viewers would like to know where you buy your tiny clothes. <laughs> it's fairyland stuff. Welcome to The Glass House, the program that asks the question, if John Howard has spent the last 10 years in office, do you think he's ever secretly sat on his photocopier? <laughs> More news than drunk snowboarders this week. In his latest graphic novel adventure, Batman will forget about old enemies like the Riddler and the Joker and take on Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> Good to see someone's still chasing him. <laughs> And Batman has the advantage because with his dark clothes and covered face, Osama will probably assume he's a woman. <laughs> In Holy Terror Batman, the Cape Crusader will battle Al-Qaeda when Gotham City is attacked by terrorists. And let's face it, trying to defeat Bin Laden in a fictional American city isn't any more stupid than trying to defeat him by invading a country he doesn't even live in. <laughs> In Brisbane, a 35-year-old man has been caught shoplifting after stuffing a whole lobster and a kilo of prawns down the front of his trousers. <laughs> Apparently, he was having a party in his pants. <laughs> but police became suspicious when Craig proceeded to the condiments aisle and poured half a litre of Thousand Island dressing down his pants. <laughs> Where he went wrong was trying to hide the lobster. What he should have done was get really sunburnt, walk in nude, and strap it to his body, Bali Nine style. <laughs> in India, an award-winning movie director wants to cast Paris Hilton as the star of a film about Mother Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> and who doesn't think of Paris Hilton when they think of Mother Teresa? <laughs> of course, Mother Teresa's most famous for her work with lepers, which Paris thinks are those funny little men who live in the bottom of Irish gardens. <laughs> But they're not that different. Mother Teresa's head once appeared on a bun. Paris Hilton's head and buns have appeared on a videotape. <laughs> Teresa looked after starving children. Paris has a dog that looks like a starving child. <laughs> and Mother T gave sucker to the needy, while Paris gives them head. <laughs> Congrats! Food news, Will Pickle. <laughs> a 66-year-old man from Cornwall who loves eating dead animals he finds on the road <laughs> now wants to publish a roadkill cookbook. <laughs> His first suggestion is, read it while you're driving. <laughs> this style of cuisine is known as cordon bleu. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, English cooking. They take a rotting three-day-old dead squirrel and totally ruin it by deep frying. <laughs> Arthur Boyt has eaten roadkill deer, pigeon, fox, mouse, bat, cat and Labrador. <laughs> but his favourite is badger sandwich. <laughs> Coincidentally, also the name of the steamy threesome scene in the first draft of Wind in the Willows. <laughs> Go, yes! I think devastating. Devastating news this week. Devastating. Mm. Do you know the payphones becoming extinct? <gasps> yeah, apparently no one's feeding them anymore. <laughs> and they're dying out. <laughs> Telstra getting rid of 5,000, that's the word. 5,000 getting rid of them. Government not happy. Absolutely not happy with Telstra, what Telstra are doing. I say to the government, you know what? You sold it, it's gone! Government, you dickheads! <laughs> that's what I say, but yeah, that's me. 
And, and the people who apparently are hurting the most are the ones in the country. But tell us to say, look, they've got mobile phones, they just have to use them. They say they've got no coverage. And tell us to go, well, bloody get a bloody buy a farm, wait five years, and we'll put a landline in. <laughs> Don't complain to us, you bloody country people. <laughs> you know, you're bloody too stupid to go to the city, aren't you? <laughs> you know, there's no news in the country anyway. What do you got to ring anyone to tell them the bloody sheep's are bloody. Doing stuff. <laughs> but, you know, I say, bloody, the only way we can solve this is give bloody homeless people mobile phones. They hang around on street corners anyway. <laughs> Just tap them on the shoulder. If they want to use the phone, they go two bucks. They go buy beer. You make a phone call. <laughs> Joining me, Corinne and Dave, to throw some stones in the glass house tonight, the hardest working mad man in show business, Pinky Beecroft. <laughs> and heading to the Adelaide Fringe with a smash hit stand up show available, Terry Siakis. <laughs> Movers and shakers. First up, Australia's most famous manufacturer of work shorts has a new range designed to end the affliction known as tradesman's cleavage. No more plumber's crack. No more peeking through the tradesman's entrance. No more bored housewives dropping $2 coins in the slot to hear a grown man giggle. <laughs> it's the end of an era. The shorts have a specially designed back so you can bend over without being cheeky. Although, when you kneel down, you still have to risk having one nut dangling out the leg. <laughs> but tradesmen need their crack exposed. It's not just for show or attracting a mate, it's a safety issue. If a tradie should lose his balance on the building site, he can grip onto a beam or girder with his prehensile butt cheeks. <laughs> Terry, you've got prehensile butt cheeks. <laughs> Sad to see the end of the swipe machine. I am. I, th I think this is really sad. In fact, I'm, I'm a bit outraged by the whole thing because, well, pretty much if you can't let your ass hang out of your pants on a building site in this country, then the terrorists have pretty much already won. <laughs> <laughs> It's just so yeah. Australian to take advantage of the opportunity to moon your mates at work. I was in a library the other day. And there was a guy in front of me in the library on this little queue and I saw his crack, you know? And it was hard for me to concentrate. I didn't think they had porn in libraries. Yeah. So, libraries are very good places to talk on your mobile phone, actually. <laughs> very quiet. <laughs> I had a cleaner at my house, and when you got a cleaner at home, it's, you know, it's bad just sit in the couch and watch them. <laughs> I feel like you should help. <laughs> Dave Hughes, man of the people. I don't know whether this is true or not, but I, someone told me that there's become an epidemic of boys and girls getting um, nerve damage in their groin from wearing these low-cut hipsters, I guess with the belt kind of sitting in their genital region, and it's causing numbness. <laughs> How hilarious is that? So you wear these to pull, and then when you get home, you can't pull. <laughs> Can I ask the girls, are you ever turned on by the sight of a male crack? <gasps> no. <laughs> I really am wearing... I'm wearing low riders right now. And it's really... It's, it's freaking me out. But do you really mean you can't get jeans for men that... They're very hard to get. Jeans. Really? All right, yes. I'll show you my crack, all right? No, no, no! <laughs> I knew this story would come to this. <laughs> I just Can I just show you a bit? This is what I'm wearing, all right? Don't just look like they're falling down. Couldn't you just pull them up? Where That's as far as they go. If I pull them up anymore, my balls oh, split. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about you have those. <laughs> that, that kind of... It starts like that, but it ends up in Brokeback Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> that is the thing, though, with hipsters. Because they're so low, you're constantly hiking them up. Like, you're saying that causes yeah. problems in your yeah, kind groin of area. groin yeah. area. For females, too, the front bum, then you run the risk of a bit of camel toe. <laughs> I mean, is, is camel toe in? I mean, I know it's in, but I... 
Has, has camel toe ever been like a? Do people you the know? Fashion in fashion? certain parts of Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, coughs are but camel toe's big. <laughs> The further north, the further north you go, it's more of a camel toe nation. <laughs> Maybe it has something to do with humidity or it's something. Further Possibly. north you go. I don't know. I think a lot of people have embraced the whole hipster thing, but not really been comfortable with it. And so you see a lot of people wriggling, jiggling, kind of pulling their things down, up, ah, frown. Let it, let it go, baby. <laughs> Go. Or, as I say, get some, or as you said, get some new G's. Yeah. Which are what these pants are called. And they've got anti-crack technology. <laughs> what is, is that? Sally's no more gaps. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Our next movers and shakers are from New York, where the latest craze comes courtesy of a specialist company that provides designer kidnappings. For about $2,000, a group of men in balaclavas will grab you off the street, stuff you in a van, and take you to an abandoned warehouse. Another company offers a whip-carrying, PVC-wearing all-girl kidnapping team who snatch you, spank you, and call you names. But they won't have sex with you. That would be weird. <laughs> so you pay someone to take you to some place you don't want to go, try to control you, and shout at you a lot. Basically, it's for people who don't have time to be in a relationship. <laughs> it might seem strange that people actually want to be confided and humiliated, but isn't that just Big Brother without the cameras? <laughs> Corinne, you like men in balaclavas. Would you pay to be kidnapped? I think I'd rather sit on the couch and eat Tim Tams. <laughs> why, why would you want to do that? And that woman, that woman who paid $15,000 to get kidnapped for 10 weeks. You could have gone to Europe and seen some nice things and possibly, you know, had a couple of roots. Wouldn't that have been a lot more fun than being shoved in the back of your car with someone holding a gun to your head for ten weeks? Yeah, but it's her choice, Corinne, and you can't deny her own choices. <laughs> I mean, that's what she wanted to do. and No one got hurt. She might have a little bit, but she paid for that. <laughs> that I, I have actually been subjected to similar events, the, you know, gun to the head and and thrown in the boot of a car. Um, they were called family holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. <laughs> I was in, and I don't know if this is totally related, <laughs> but I was in another country once, and... Uh, you might still be now. Uh, <laughs> now this is a true story. I, I ended up living in this kind of weird... Uh, S&M house. What country? <laughs> what, give us the country. It was an Eastern European country. But what one? No, they've all changed their names. <laughs> no, they're all called Russia at the time. The now they're called living. other... But they're not called that now. Yeah, they're but called... you're living in the former Russia. I think... I think it... Russia stayed the same. All right, the former it's... Russia. Do you think it's a coincidence that after you left, they had to change their names? Because <laughs> <laughs> a whole country? I was living in this bondage and discipline place. This really happened was an acid trip. <laughs> <laughs> If I can tell a story, Sorry. it's a very straight, okay. serious piece of human love. There was, a, <laughs> there was a guy whose fantasy it was, was to be the dancing bear, right? <laughs> so he would come, the woman would kind of make him dance on a hot plate and, we, you know, it's horrible what they do to dancing bears in, <laughs> you know. And she told me this, right? Yeah, sure. There was another guy yeah. who would come every week and his thing to get off yeah. was to watch the guy who was the dancing. <laughs> but get this, they didn't know each other. Twelve years this went on. <laughs> and and they never spoke. They left separately, they arrived separately. They would come on the guy, dancing bear, <laughs> dance on the hot plate, kind of thing. <laughs> the other guy in the corner going, oh, I love the dancing bear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a love story. That's better than a fuck broke back mountain. This is, <laughs> this is real. This is love. They never met. Now, to me, to me, you know, getting kidnapped, cool. If it turns you on, do it, you know? I mean, there's people who join the Liberal Party. <laughs> there's people who do all sorts of things. It turns them on. <laughs> I'll shut up now. <laughs> Uh, 
Our favourite movers and shakers are the fine, upstanding makers of personal pleasure products. In the tradition of the iPod comes the iBuzz, a musical orgasm machine. <laughs> It vibrates in response to the beat of the music, with the volume control regulating the intensity of the pleasure surges. And just like a man, it only lasts for three and a half minutes. <laughs> this puts real genitals even further behind in the pleasure stakes, except for those men who can hum through their testicles. <laughs> Pinky, you like a good hummer? Does the eye buzz appeal? I think it'll catch on. <laughs> I think this is the end of the world. This eye buzz thing. Really? I think, Why? You know, we're, we're just getting to be... It's, it's part of a worldwide conspiracy where they want us to be locked in dark rooms with our headphones on listening to shit-sounding music <laughs> with little things-uppers. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not how the world should be. <laughs> throw the iPod away, throw the eye buzz away, throw every piece of machinery away, come to a great live band and stand right in the right spot. And if they're good, they will reach into you <laughs> telepathically, turn the taps on, <laughs> and it will all be cool. <laughs> Terry, are you like are you into the idea of the eye buzz? No, look, I'm not into the idea of the kind of the sex toy thing much. At all. Really. Well, not because I don't think, you know, I'd enjoy it, but because I just think, what happens when I die and mm. my family's going through my yeah. stuff <laughs> and they find all my... Yeah. Like, I don't want Mum you holding up an eyeballs going, what, you know, what's this? I just... That kind of weirds me out. Although they know your favourite tunes to play at the funeral. <laughs> 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 but I don't know about people listening, you know, having their headphones on in darkened rooms. I most often see people doing the iPod thing on public transport and I think the iBuzz would be infinitely more annoying because normally if it's just an iPod, <laughs> it's just annoying to hear that. You know when the person next to you is listening to music and you can hear that along. tick, tick, tick? How yeah. annoying to listen to the person next to you's orgasm. That's just... <laughs> I don't know. Anyone much. getting off at the next stop? No, I'm getting off here. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to share too much information, but I will. Is this a, <laughs> for me, I mean, the, the, the sexual thing, I don't like noise. I like it quiet. But really? is, I don't think do there's mean? noise involved. Yeah. I think it's How just quiet? that... I don't think it goes inside you. I don't think it's... <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> I don't think it's got a speaker. Isn't it? I thought it was singing songs at you. No, no, no. no you, it, What's it, it doing? It vibrates to the beat of the music. The pleasure surges are controlled by the music. Oh. So yeah. certain fans of certain people, obviously, are going to be taking theirs back, going, well, mine never gave me an orgasm. <laughs> Not mentioning any names, you know, Matchbox 20. <laughs> What if they were listening to John Williamson? Yeah. <laughs> Take about ten hours to have an orgasm. <laughs> who, wants to have, who wants to have sex to rip rip wood? <laughs> Got some great love songs. Really? Hey, True Blue. <laughs> Cootam under wattle. <laughs> There's others. <laughs> Have you and Holly ever put on a bit of John Williamson yeah. in the bedroom? No, we haven't. Because you like it quiet. I like it. <laughs> she likes the TV on. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested in the eye buzz, the real trick is building the playlist. Start with something gentle like a ballad, then move to 80s new wave, hard rock, skate punk, death metal, jungle, 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 and finish with Enya. <laughs> Later in the glass house, government backbencher Chris Pine lists three things that are more fun than a barbecue at Kirribilli House. An emphysemic lung, a gangrenous foot, a heart bypass operation. Kim Beasley reveals what he plans to do with a pit bull that's been trained to attack Mr Sheen lookalikes. Let it go. Peter McGoran decides against quitting politics for a lucrative career in the German film industry. Uh, the simple fact is, he's my brother, and I won't dump on him. Tonight's question on the glass house is, if you could have anything for a pet, what would it be? 
find some answers. If you could have anything for a pet, what would it be? A dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, is that very practical? Or... <laughs> but no one else has one, so you... No, they don't. Because no. they're extinct. <laughs> yeah, right. A dolphin. What would you call it? Squeaky. Squeaky. Squeak, I'd call mine Flipper. That's very original. Well, all right. <laughs> uh, I'd have a sloth. Yeah, why would you have a sloth? Just because it could just be just like me. <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, just hang out with it, sit in a lounge. There wouldn't be any pressure to take it for a walk. No, no, just a few cold ones. That'd be it. Relax, you're a sloth. Yeah. I'd probably have the moon. Wow, I never thought about the moon as a pet. Yeah. Would you bring it home or would you leave it where it was? Uh, I'll bring it home. Bring it home, yeah. yeah, yeah put good it... partner on the couch. Good partner on the couch, yeah. Just hope your mate doesn't give you the moon. <laughs> so you mean if your mate... Gave you the moon. Beat his ass? Yeah. Right. Yeah, you but you've got the real moon. Yeah. All right. You on drugs? <laughs> you? Me? Yeah. I think you'd be pretty fun to play with. You'd have to clean up after me, though. I'm... <laughs> Bit messy. And yeah, I eat a lot. <laughs> probably... Leave, leave slobber on the couch. Oh, you're disgusting. <laughs> That's how pests get abandoned. They're not, we're not just for Christmas. If you could have anything for a pet, what would it be? I don't know, maybe a monkey. A monkey? You got a boyfriend? Yes, my boyfriend. Is he like a monkey? <laughs> oh, I can be a monkey, yeah, if she asked me to be. Whatever, you know. Whatever you do at home in the privacy of your own home, it's up to you two. Yeah. For bunnies, Berlin has unveiled the latest marvel of German engineering, a giant rabbit called Hermann. <laughs> Hermann is one metre long and weighs 10 kilos. Someday soon, Alma Fudd's going to hear a loud, angry knock on the door. <laughs> the German Rabbit Breeders Association says the giants are good-natured, reliable and calm. Sure they are. Then one day you come home from work and find Glenn close in the pot on the stove. <laughs> Cusy, I'd like your help. Sure. I want you to be the giant German rabbit. Oh, right. And we're going to interview you. Right. First question, Flopsy Dave. How did you get so big? Oh, how this big? Just say eating a lot of carrots. That's all you eat, carrots and lettuce. How do you get so big? Oh, I wash them down with steroids. <laughs> Have you always been this big, or was it a sudden growth spurt? I mean, were you a big child? Uh, a big I was a big baby? child. I was a big baby. Big child, big adult. Yeah. Rabbit. Right, so just <laughs> always... Were you uncomfortable at school? Like... No, I wasn't uncomfortable. Who was going to hassle me? <laughs> Good point. Hassle me, I'll sit on you. you your, your feet, too. Like, you know how they say rabbits' feet are lucky? Yeah. You've obviously got really big feet, because you're big all over. Sure. Are, are your feet extra lucky? Extra lucky. Actually, they're very lucky. They take me to the, all the ladies. <laughs> oh, so you do, like, you know, you, you breed like a rabbit? Yeah, like a big rabbit. <laughs> I don't want to get too personal, but aren't the ladies a little bit scared of you? You are a lot larger than... They you. are scared, there's no doubt about that, but I say feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so are the ladies... Are the, are the lady rabbits also big like you? Ah, uh, no. Don't want a fat bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, girls, don't blame me. It's the way it is. Uh, the, you know, they, they say that steroids actually shrink your genitals. Have you had that problem? Uh, look, yeah, well, possibly, but they, I'm, we're starting from a very large base. So. <laughs> Be right for a few more years. <laughs> uh, you are a German rabbit. What's the difference, we say, between a German rabbit and an Australian rabbit? The way we speak. <laughs> really? I'm obviously just putting on an accent now. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I speak like a German rabbit. Could you give us an example? Nein. <laughs> that means no if you don't know, dickhead. <laughs> When people use the phrase, you know, to, to root like rabbits, is that a frequency thing or a technique thing? No, generally it's frequency. We root a lot, you know. How much is a lot? Just, uh, you know. We root, uh, well, I haven't, I haven't got a watch. Well, I do tonight, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, 
uh, just more than... Yeah, I, look, I can't count. I'm a rabbit. <laughs> Heaps. Like, all the time. If I'm not eating carrots, I'm shoving them up someone. <laughs> oh. 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 I just disgrace my species. <laughs> oh. 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 Yes, it's time to award the coveted Glasshouse Trophy, which this week is called... Dex Calhoun Memorial Turnbuckle of Truth is an American preacher who's come up with a new way to spread the good word. He's combined Bible stories with body slams to produce ultimate Christian wrestling. <laughs> Unorthodox, sure, but entirely logical. If you believe wrestling is real, you'll believe God is. <laughs> so the trophy goes to Father Rob Adonis and his sinner smackdown. Before settling on Christian pro wrestling, they tried Christian jelly wrestling. But it actually was as creepy as it sounds. <laughs> well, that's the way it is for Wednesday, March the 1st. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Pinky. And let's take a look at tomorrow's headlines. According to The Australian, Bin Laden likes being hugged. Cheaper protection than bulletproof vest. <laughs> the Sun Weekly has David Hicks in Guantanamo tourist campaign. Where the bloody hell am I? From the Herald Tribune, George Michael in drug bust. Offers undercover cop his crack. <laughs> and the Courier Mail says, Wheat Boss spits on internet expert. Flugy Loogie's Google Boy of AWB. Good night! Join us for more laughs on Friday as international superstar Ali G travels to New York to baffle high-profile publishers with his book ideas on Ali G in the USA, 10.15 Friday night on ABC. Harrison Ford's had a few dodgy roles on screen lately. Is Firewall, he's come back. Find out in a few moments on At The Movies.